Welcome, everybody. We'll be starting in just a moment. I'm going to give people another few seconds to join. Starting in just one moment. All right, we'll give people another few seconds to join and then we'll start. Okay, let's get started. Welcome everybody. Thank you for attending our monthly educational webinar series. Today, our topic is on improving the financial reporting process. And I am Nicole Fortine. Um, I'm a customer success manager at Veravest. And also we have Dylan Brown here. He's a fund controller at Veravest. So let's take a look at the overview and we'll kind of explain both sides of the topic. So the first half will be regarding timelines. And some of you may have already been introduced to timelines with your customer success manager. And if you haven't, there is no need to worry. You will still receive somebody reaching out to you to schedule a timeline meeting. But essentially what timelines are, are um, a calendar that we both agree to. So you, the manager, will agree to times when you can respond to questions from our team, to when you can provide all cash and non-cash backup. And based on when you can deliver those items, we generate a timeline for when your financials and statements can be delivered. So um, it's just essentially a calendar that can be generated for the entire year based on those timelines that we agreed to. And then the next half of the webinar will be on the financial reporting process. So it's gonna give you some insight and clarity into basically what our entire admin process is once you deliver that cash and non-cash backup. So we wanna give you clarity into what's going on. And then we also encourage you to ask questions Throughout that webinar, at the end, we really want to make sure that this process is clear and transparent for you, so please feel free to drop questions at any time. All right, Dylan, let's, let's start the presentation. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks so much, Nicole. To begin with, I'm just going to cover the why are these timelines suddenly come up in conversations and what's why are they rolling out. Uh, we find that these are best practice in our industry and Hopefully we'll provide some predictability upon the deliverables that we generate. And it doesn't also hurt that we've actually received a lot of requests from clients to implement these. And we truly believe that this is going to provide a benefit for everyone involved. So as Nicole mentioned, many of you have probably had a discussion about timelines, but if not, up on this slide here is what you can expect at the end of your discussion. Here we'll show a couple of key input items that we talk about and an output table at the bottom showing three key highlights of when we need information, when Verivest is going to get back to you, and when you can expect us to deliver preliminary reporting. I mentioned those three inputs there. The first input that we're looking for is how quickly you respond. Typically, we're looking for one to two business days. After that, we're looking for when you can provide all required information. This really concerns at the end of the month or the end of the quarter, how quickly can you give us everything that we normally ask for? And last but not least, we're going to be asking how many business days do you want after the period end until desired reporting? This means when do you want those investor statements to go out and to have those financials finalized? If those three things are known, We'll work together to make that previous slides calendar so that way you can look ahead and have the ability to plan out when things are going to happen. Now the timeline itself is broken up into two different stages. The first stage is documentation collection. We're going to be asking a lot of questions during this stage. There will be a lot of back and forth and this is where we need to have everything done before we move on to the next stage. This is an early indicator of us being on track in the financial reporting process. 
So that way you don't have to worry about sending everything in and just hearing silence into your prelims. We're gonna be working together to make sure that you know that you have everything provided and that we can begin our work. And speaking of beginning of our work, this kicks off stage two. We're gonna be doing a lot of our processes during this stage. There'll be multiple review steps, both internal and external with you, and there will be multiple approvals. So at this point, we're going to move away from the timelines, and I'm going to dig into the financial reporting process itself. It can be broken down into seven steps. First up, we have our cash transaction documentation and recording, followed closely with the non-cash documentation. Step three, we have the accrual preparation process. Step four is internal review. Five is the preliminary review stage, and then six is where we do investor servicing and get ready for that final step of closing the period. To begin at the first stage here, cash documentation recording. This begins with you all. You all will be going out there and you'll be taking in investor money. You'll be making investments, funding loans, and paying bills. All the while you're doing this, we're gonna be downloading your transactions and making sure we ask for any supporting documentation. We're gonna be reviewing those and matching them up to allow the fund account to come in and start entering those cash transactions in our financial reporting software, which is QuickBooks. And we're gonna be reconciling to any items that you provide. Now this begins at the start of the period and it's gonna go all the way until we have all of the documentation provided. Now, as we get to the end of the month or the quarter, this is where we'll begin our non-cash step. Of course, non-cash just means anything that happens outside of your bank transactions. A couple examples of these are any accrual amounts needed for that year-end tax or audit prep expense, it also involves a lot of investor changes. So if you have any redemption requests, email updates, distribution preference changes, that will also be needed at this stage. And then if you're doing any changes to your operating agreement or any asset agreement changes, such as changing an interest rate on a loan, this is where we'll need it. We also may be asking for a couple reconciling support items. Uh, if we have access, we're going to try to be pulling those bank statements without having to involve you. But there will be a couple items such as lender statements of account and debt statements if you take out any liabilities that we may ask for. So that way we can have the proof that our numbers that we report are verified at a third party. Last but not least, if your fund strategy involves investing in other entities, then we'll be looking for asset performance. This can include investment statements, fair market valuations, any items of unrealized income, or in some cases, the underlying financial statements. So as I said, this begins at the end of the month or quarter, and it's going to go until we have all the items. So part of this is where we get to a checkpoint. This is where you're going to communicate that you've provided everything that you think we need, and we're going to go in and within two business days, try to get back to you with any questions or comments. You'll of course reply back and get settled. And then you'll actually have a stage where we will confirm that we have everything and you know that we are starting on the accrual preparation step. So this step is one of my favorites, granted because I am the one mostly doing this. <laughs> so it's the one I'm most uh, experienced with, but this is where we do kind of the meat and potatoes work of fund admin. We're logging all of these cash transactions. We're putting them into Excel spreadsheets. We're number crunching and we're preparing a lot of calculations. We're taking all of that non-cash documentation that you give us and we're gonna be reconciling them. And according to accrual accounting uh, procedures, we're gonna be making some journal entries on those financial statements. And this really can take anywhere from three to eight business days. And it depends on the complexity of your fund and also the volume. Now, before we send it off, we actually have an initial review phase of another accountant at Vervis going in and doing their quality control check. We do follow a checklist when it comes to this initial review, and we're trying to eliminate as many errors in our calculations and reported information as possible. We're also making sure that 
whatever you do receive is consistent with our standards on both treatment and display. And this could take one to two business days. Now, once we have the internal green light, we're gonna be sending it over to you in our preliminary reporting step. This is the time that you'll first be seeing your financial reports and some supporting information. And this is the place for you to start commenting, asking questions, or making any adjustments to what you're seeing. Ideally, we both come together and get approval on this reporting. And this can take anywhere from one business day to, of course, whenever we get the financial product that we both agree on. When we have that approval, we go ahead and move on to the next phase, investor servicing. This is the step where we take that financial performance, typically your net income for the period, and we wanna put that onto each individual investor's accounts. This involves us going in and making allocations and or distributions. Another way to describe allocations is we go into your operating agreement, we take your income allocation waterfall that's described, and we go in and we perform calculations. This could involve calculating your preferred return, your split between the manager and the LPs, or even IRR hurdles. If your fund declares a distribution for the period, we'll be also generating a register for you. So that way you know how to get money out to your investors, either via check or ACH. And if applicable, we're also gonna be prepping some NACHA files. Now, all of this will be flowing through and being captured on the investor statements. Depending on the distributions, there may be a couple more journal entry updates that we have to make so the financials will change. And this process takes about one to two more business days. If we feel that all of the items have been completed and are ready for your review, we'll send it off and we can begin closing the period. We'll be saving down and sending you the finalized financials package. This will include your balance sheet, your profit loss, and possibly your GL. We're also gonna be saving your supporting schedules down. So that way, if we ever have to look back and say, why was that number this way? We're gonna have something to support all the numbers that we show on your financials. And this is where we need some more approval. For the last time, you're gonna to have to review those investor statements to make sure that everything looks good and they're ready to be published and sent out to all of your investors. So with this being the final step, I just wanted to kind of go through a couple more items. Um, when it comes to the timeline and financial reporting process, if there's any time that um, you miss an agreed upon deliverable date, a new timeline will need to be decided. We've instituted a lot of kind of steps to make sure we know where we are at all times on this. So when we ever feel like something is going to be in jeopardy, we're gonna be proactive about that and try to communicate that, hey, this was missed and we may need to reevaluate. The reason for this is we schedule our workout in advance to make sure that there are people available when your fund is ready to be worked upon. And any delays in receiving information may throw others into jeopardy and we may have to move the timeline back to the end of the queue. Now, many of you will get your first iteration of the timeline and wonder whether or not maybe some changes can be made. Um, in subsequent periods, we may have adjustments. This could either shorten or elongate your timeline depending on factors either within or without your control over financial reporting. Um, all business days that we state are business days. This ensures that we have the same amount of work days every single period to prepare your financials. In other words, it does not include weekends and holidays. And last but not least, I think the, the key thing that, you know, if everyone practiced this, the whole process will go along much more smoothly is inform us when something new happens. And any time, if you're engaging in a new strategy, you're rewriting documents, or you just decided to open up a new bank account, always let us know. The thing that slows us down the most is discovering something in the middle of the process that had we known earlier, would have changed a couple of accrual items or any reporting. So with that, I'll go ahead and wrap it up and hopefully we have some questions and we'll be happy to provide some answers. Thank you. 
So if you have questions, you can feel free to drop them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Just to get us started, we did get a couple of questions from clients before the webinar, and so I'll read a couple of those until you guys are done writing your questions, hopefully. So our first question is, how can I improve my timeline schedule? I want to make the time when I receive my preliminaries shorter. Yeah, so I think with that, if you do want to get a sooner, I guess, deliverable date, then we may have to look at how quickly you can provide us some information. Uh, but in, in addition to that, we based a lot of these timelines on historical performance. So if over time we find that we are more comfortably being able to meet each deadline, it could leave the room open to actually shorten these turnaround times that we first put on. Yeah, and also a factor in there is how how quickly you can answer questions from our team. If you respond same business day or next business day, that really does shorten the entire process as well. So if we can respond to each other in a quicker timeline, that can also help adjust your timeline down. All right, um, we have another question that was sent in. Um, is there any wiggle room in the Veravest business days turnaround it takes at each stage? So particularly the seven to 10 days to send the prelim section. So with that long section, um, depending on if you've been an existing client or a new client, we really base that on historical, I guess, performance on looking back at each period. Uh, ideally, this seven to 10 day turnaround time includes the wiggle room. So that way we're comfortably meeting it every time. We never want to have a timeline put in place where only is successful in the best scenario. We already have it built in there to make sure that if something unexpected happens, it doesn't completely disrupt it. And we find ourselves restating the timeline every period. All right. Um, next question is, what if my timeline says I will deliver all items by day three and I'm late by a day or two? Does this mean that I have to get a new timeline or will my entire schedule be late? I would say this depends on how much information is missing and what we're missing. Um, generally, at this point, we would be reaching out to you and saying, hey, your deliverable date is coming due and we're still missing these items. And you would have to work with your fund accountant or even client success manager to see and evaluate, does this actually affect the timeline or not? But it's gonna be treated on a case by case basis. All right, thank you. And then we just have one last question unless there's any questions that are, are sent in through the Q&A. So if you have a question, please feel free to send it. Um, our last question is, what's the best way to communicate approval of the prelims so that everything can be processed quickly. Perfect. Yeah. So at the preliminary stage, we typically send out an email and on that email is going to be your fund accountant contact and CC is going to be your client entity at Verivest email. So when you, any time you are looking for approval, if you reply back to everyone at Verivest, which includes your accountant and that client email, you're notifying the, I guess, largest amount of people that your fund is ready to go. And that way, if all of a sudden, so when you know, your fund account gets sick, there are other teammates at Verivest who get that information and can act upon it as soon as possible. Great, well, it looks like we didn't get any other questions sent in to the Q&A. So I wanna thank everybody for attending and um, we'll see you on the next educational series webinar. Thank you so much. Bye.